Following the successful reboot of Ninja Gaiden in 2004, Team Ninja returned with a sequel in 2008 with Ninja Gaiden 2. It's a fast, bloody action game, but also a game with signs of developmental difficulties. From somewhat unfinished looking areas, poor performance and a low resolution, it failed to live up to the brilliant original. But despite some rough edges, it's still an interesting and enjoyable game. And thanks to Xbox One backwards compatibility, at least some of these issues can be fully resolved. Ninja Gaiden 2 now offers full support for Xbox One X, and the result is remarkable. This is one of the most impressive leaps we've seen in quality to date. But it's not the first time that Ninja Gaiden 2 was given a second chance. The game received a conversion titled Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 for PlayStation 3, and a port of that to PlayStation Vita known as Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 Plus. With all these different versions of the game then, I felt it was time to stack them up against one another in an all-out graphics deathmatch. I mean, who hasn't wanted to compare Xbox One X to PlayStation Vita of all things? So today we're going to explore each version of the game and test performance across all of them. All that and more is coming up on this very bloody episode of DF Retro Extra. When Ninja Gaiden arrived for the original Xbox in 2004, in my mind, it redefined 3D action games. The action was fast, fluid, and challenging, but it was the brilliant level design and hub system which really pushed it to the top. In many ways, it almost feels like a much faster progenitor to the space that Dark Souls would come to inhabit, and not just because of its challenging melee combat either. It's the overall flow and level design that really stands out. It works brilliantly and has become the model for many other melee action games. This was followed up with a refinement to the original game known as Ninja Gaiden Black before a full sequel was announced which would appear four years later. Ninja Gaiden 2 finally arrived in 2008 and while there were some improvements to the core combat system, the game had become completely linear eschewing the original hub system in favor of completely straightforward levels. And some of the later levels in the game even feel somewhat unfinished. One moment you're exploring a beautiful city, while a chapter later you might find yourself in an ugly featureless tunnel. Many scenes in the game were very well done, but others left a lot to be desired. I was never a fan of the rocket spamming soldiers for instance. It was a good but unbalanced game, lacking the refinement and perfection the original attained four years prior. Beyond this, the technical side of things took kind of a dive. The 2004 entry was state of the art on Xbox with a non-wavering 60 FPS frame rate, gorgeous worlds to explore, and visuals beyond just about anything else out there. In 2008, however, Ninja Gaiden 2 exhibited severe performance and screen tearing issues, along with one of the lowest rendering resolutions on Xbox 360. Which is where Xbox One X comes into play. The original version on 360 runs at just 1120 by 585 but on Xbox One X, the resolution sees a 9x boost to 3360 by 1755. Thankfully, while the original resolution was indeed very low, 2x MSAA was utilized and this of course applies to Xbox One X as well. It just so happens that the game's visual style is very well suited to higher resolutions. Rather than pushing next-gen effects and post-processing, at least for the time, Ninja Gaiden evolves the simple and clean style Team Ninja had become known for. As a result, at 1755p, the game is now kind of a sight to behold. Texture filtering is massively improved, aliasing is nearly erased, and character models are super clean. It has a timeless sort of look that really holds up well today. And sure, while it's not cutting edge, I feel the visual style works well enough that it could almost exist as a native Xbox One title, which it kind of feels like since even the HUD, which is generally lower resolution, manages to scale up very nicely indeed. 
Of course, if you're rocking an Xbox One or an Xbox One S, there is no resolution boost, as is always the case with backwards compatible games on these systems. Thanks to the higher resolution on Xbox One X though, I feel it's finally possible to appreciate the technical improvements implemented in building Ninja Gaiden 2. This is a game designed very specifically for the Xbox 360 hardware. It's designed around huge polygon counts with lots of alpha transparency. It takes advantage of the super fast ED RAM connected directly to the GPU, allowing for tons of these effects. There's also a focus on dismemberment. Limbs can be severed in combat, and you'll find yourself ripping enemies to literal shreds during gameplay. Not only is the effect impressive, but blood decals remain all around the stage after a long battle, lending to the sense of surviving a massive scuffle. The 360 also pushes huge enemy counts, flooding the scene with foes at every turn. It's this ratcheting up of the enemy counts, increased level of detail, and the dismemberment system which result in the greatest leap over the original Xbox game. Of course, there's also things like faster loading, instant saving, instant weapon switching, and more. It's a very seamless feeling game in terms of the overall user experience. Unfortunately, as I've noted earlier, all of this leads to some serious performance issues for Xbox 360, and plenty of torn frames. The battle on the stairs in Chapter 10 is especially well known for this. While making your way to the top, the game simply floods the screen with enemies in huge numbers. This is the patched version of the game too, which reduces the count slightly from the unpatched original. Even still, all these enemies take a toll on the poor Xbox 360, and perhaps my eyes as well. Just look at all this tearing. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! So of course my first question here then is, does Xbox One X solve the issue? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. The performance is now basically locked to 60 frames per second throughout this entire scene. No matter how many enemies appear on screen, the Xbox One X never seems to struggle. The reason this is so important though comes down to game speed. Like many older titles, the actual game speed is tied directly to the frame rate. Drop below 60 frames per second and everything begins to move at a slower rate. So on 360, the scene plays out in slow motion, while Xbox One X delivers the proper full speed experience instead. With this being one of the heaviest scenes in the game then, it should come as no surprise that the rest of Ninja Gaiden 2 fares equally as well. Performance is locked to 60 frames per second at all times during gameplay, and it never lets up. Of course, some cutscenes do employ a 30 FPS cap, but that's by design and the system cannot overcome this. The Xbox One S then delivers a noticeable improvement as well, regularly hitting 60 frames per second, but it isn't able to fully lock performance as we see on X. So it's better, but not perfect. On X though, the increase in both resolution and frame rate make for a tremendous upgrade. The crystal skulls you collect in this game have never looked better. With my skull. What is it with media from this era and its obsession with crystal skulls, I wonder? Either way, Xbox One X basically solves everything. This is now the way Ninja Gaiden 2 is meant to be played. But there's more to the story. Released just one year after the 360 original, Ninja Gaiden 2 was converted for PlayStation 3 under the name Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, and it's a really interesting conversion. In some ways, this is one of the most fascinating ports I've ever looked at. You see, Ninja Gaiden 2 was clearly crafted very specifically for Xbox 360. The focus on alpha effects, huge polygon counts, and dismemberment just don't work well on PlayStation 3. Rather than brute forcing the game, however, and accepting a lower frame rate, the team opted to make sweeping changes instead. So this is not a Bayonetta situation. Instead, new content was created for the game, some content was removed, level designs were tweaked, enemy patterns were changed, and the visuals were updated. It's a very different beast. From a gameplay perspective, the biggest change really comes from the reduction in the enemy count. The world feels almost empty on Sony's machine, and enemies that do appear sometimes take more damage than they normally would, likely to make up for the lower enemy count. And this has a rather significant impact on the overall flow of the game. One I feel is for the worse. 
The new content is also somewhat mixed. I'm not a huge fan of the Rachel chapters and the new puzzle elements, but I did enjoy some of the new boss encounters. Sure, the statue boss added to the first stage is relatively simple, but it feels reasonably interesting and it looks great. But while many elements were cut or changed, it's the approach to visuals that fascinates the most. You see, Sigma 2 runs at a higher resolution than on 360, hitting 1280 by 718 instead. The top rows are blacked out, so it falls just below 720 lines. And it certainly looks cleaner than Xbox 360 in this sense, but obviously if we compare this to the new upgraded Xbox One X edition, it falls behind as you'd expect. But you might also pick up on some of the other visual changes on display. Ryu's model, for instance, has received a subtle boost in polygonal detail during cutscenes, while lighting has been modified and bloom added. The changes are fascinating in that it's difficult to say whether it really looks better or not. It's kind of a matter of opinion, and I think that both have strong points, but obviously there's no way to play Sigma 2 at high resolutions on original hardware right now. There's plenty of other interesting changes as well. During this cutscene, for instance, you'll notice that the large crowd of demons here on the 360 version has been reduced significantly on PlayStation 3, leaving the room partially empty. Scenes like this exploit the Xbox 360's Vertex processing capabilities in a big way, and the development team of Sigma 2 had to find a way to make it work on PS3 without destroying performance, and, well, here it is. Then there's the lighting tweaks, which are evident throughout the game. During the beautiful introduction sequence as we're introduced to Sky City Tokyo, take note of the new bloom effect which is heavily used on PlayStation 3 along with some of the other minor lighting changes. The result is, again, a very different looking game. I think the bloom works fairly well in these outdoor sequences, but if we cut to the interior here, well, it doesn't look quite right to me and I prefer the look of the game on 360, or in this case, Xbox One X. <laughs> This bit also highlights a major change in the violence level of the game. <coughs> Which carries over to gameplay, of course. The dismemberment system and blood spray has been ripped out and replaced on PS3 with what I might describe as a more ethereal solution. I suspect the change is the result of optimization on Sony's machine. The extra alpha effects and limb removal would likely tax the RSX more, resulting in severe slowdown. Thus, it was changed. While we're on the second chapter, you'll notice that the time of day has been changed. And in this case, again, I kind of prefer the 360 version when it comes to overall atmosphere. The entire chapter just has a very different look on PS3 versus the 360 original. Of course, one change in favor of the PS3 version is the way water is rendered. The reflections and appearance of ripples across the surface of the water just appears slightly more attractive on Sony's console. But it's not so cut and dried as, moments later when Ryu emerges from the water, well, he's missing his reflection on the PS3 side, so again, it's kind of a mixed bag. Then there's the infamous battle on the stairs, which runs a lot better on PS3, but only because the number of enemies has been reduced significantly. The battle now feels somewhat empty and less intense as a result of this change. It's almost as if Xbox 360's version of you had already been through here, wiping out most of the enemies, and on PS3 you just deal with the stragglers. Maybe that's why the earlier cutscene was so empty as well. So yeah, it's an interesting conversion. Gameplay tweaks, modified content, and huge changes to the presentation result in a game that just feels different. After playing them both again though, I definitely prefer the 360 original, specifically on Xbox One X, but I do appreciate Sigma 2 and the ways in which the development team have adapted the game to work on PS3. It's the kind of port we just don't see these days, and I find it extremely interesting. In an even more bizarre twist though, Sigma 2 received a port of its own this time on PlayStation Vita, and well, perhaps some things just shouldn't be. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 Plus on Vita is a scaled down adaptation of the PS3 game, and yeah, it doesn't work very well at all. The first major change involves the cutscenes. Unlike other versions of the game, the Vita version relies entirely on full motion video clips captured from the PS3 version. 
well, at least most scenes. There's a few interstitial sequences like this, which do run in real time and highlight the difference between the two systems very well. But most of the story-driven stuff is completely pre-rendered. It looks good enough on a real Vita screen, of course, but it's not optimal. In-game, a lot of cuts have been made as well, starting with resolution, which is now dynamic, and from what I can tell, it can drop as low as 408p during busy scenes. Apparently, an overclocked Vita can run the game at a higher resolution, but I haven't had a chance to set this up myself. Something to keep in mind, though. Expectedly, detail in general takes a significant hit. Textures are reduced in resolution, and texture filtering is extremely poor, models are slightly simplified, and the game just looks kinda washed out and blurry. But, even still, for a handheld system released so many years ago, it's really not that bad, and the drop in detail would be completely acceptable if the frame rate were smoother. Yes, as you've probably noticed by now, the Vita version runs at 30 frames per second, but with a lot of slowdown. And like its bigger brother, slowdown means reduced gameplay speed. The result is a game that always seems to be struggling to maintain its target, but very rarely does it get there. There's even little hitches and pauses that pop up during gameplay, and the whole thing just doesn't feel as smooth as it should. It's a far cry from the original port of Ninja Gaiden Sigma to Vita, released closer to launch. This does bring up an interesting thing, though. On the Vita, the gore from the 360 version has been partially restored, and it was suggested to me that disabling this would improve performance. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, this doesn't really seem to be the case, and the game continues to drop below 30 frames per second during combat. Also, keep in mind that the gore system in this version is still toned down compared to the 360 original. So yeah, it's a huge step down, but it's also kind of impressive that it exists at all. Keep in mind that the PS Vita hardware is nowhere near as capable as the Xbox 360 or PS3 in terms of raw processing power, and it definitely isn't well suited to a game like this. This was made with all the strengths of the 360 in mind and then modified to work well on a PS3, which, again, required additional modification to run on Vita. In some ways, this feels like a precursor to various modern Switch ports such as Mortal Kombat 11, which seem to require more than the system can comfortably deliver, but this is even worse due to a loss in performance as well. And that was the final release for Ninja Gaiden 2 at least until its reappearance, enhanced on Xbox One X, which is exactly where you should be replaying the game if you're so inclined. As I suggested early on, I feel Ninja Gaiden 2 is kind of a flawed gem. It's not the perfectly refined action game that the 2004 title was, but it's still a good time and it feels great with all of its visual flaws completely eliminated. The frame rate is now flawless, image quality completely cleaned up, and loading is even faster. Sure, it doesn't solve any of the level design issues that pop up later in the game, but that's okay. It's still worth checking out. The Sigma versions, though, are also interesting. They offer a different perspective on the original game. The change in director shows through, and as a result, I don't think it plays quite as well as the original release, but it's such an unusual port that it's worth checking out just to experience the changes. I can also say that I've had a lot of fun revisiting Ninja Gaiden 2 this week, and its flaws are somehow less bothersome today than back in 2008. Perhaps it's just due to expectations. In fact, I think I prefer the level design here to something like Devil May Cry 5, which, while it's an excellent game in terms of combat, it's kind of lacking when it comes to environments to explore. It's just a shame then that the series has likely come to an end. Ninja Gaiden 3 was a step down and Razor's Edge couldn't fully solve that. It's unlikely we'll see a new Ninja Gaiden title anytime soon, and even if we do, will it even be the same? Of course, it's always been an uneven series, going back to the original arcade and NES titles. Some conversions were great, others less so, but the series has always been memorable. With both the 2004 Ninja Gaiden and now Gaiden 2 playable on Xbox One X in high resolution though, there is perhaps no better time to jump in than now. But that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, stay retro.